All right, welcome back to episode 148 of Chaotically Intolerant. Happy Happy St. Patrick's Day, like, I don't know, a day after? Is there is there a specific name for that? It's not Eve. Um, Post-Eve? post Patty's Day? post Patty's Day. Happy post Patty's Day to everyone who celebrates. Um, my, we were talking about it before. My favorite tradition is the green uniforms um, for Major League Baseball. The Reds started it in the 70s, and it's just, it's gorgeous. The anytime, the same thing with Father's Day when they do the blue uniforms. Mother's Day, they do the pink, right? Um, and 4th of July, they used to do, 4th of July used to be like stars and stripes in the logo. I don't know if they do that anymore, which was vacation of America last year. Yeah, I have the Wilds half of last year's navy blue, red, red bell, and then the stars and stripes logo. It's awesome. Yeah, we need more of stuff. I want, I want them to do like random holidays, like the Pillsbury Doughboy's birthday. Can we, can we get something for that? When is his birthday? Let's that. That's the necessary it's thing. The perfect. They got to bring that up to the majors. Let me Pillsbury. I can't even spell Pillsbury. Here we go. March 18th. Oh my God. Today is tomorrow. When this episode releases, it's his birthday. Happy birthday to the Pillsbury Doughboy. What love? Clap it's it up. I'm going all out. 1965 was when he was born. Wow. He looks great. Still, still looks young. No sagging dough. Nothing like that. <laughs> He's not a sagging dough guy. Awesome. Happy birthday to the Pillsbury Doughboy. What a perfect thing. No, it was just meant to me that I that I brought up Pillsbury Doughboy. But anyways, more important things. Clearly, more important things. Nothing's more important than the Pillsbury Doughboy. But we we're not going to do anything on the Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm not prepared. NFL free agency hit this week. Um, if you have been paying attention to March Madness, some of the tournaments, if you've been paying attention to spring training. I've been to two spring training games this week. Um, Thursday, sure, sure. A lot of the guys or a lot of the people that follow us know we met Frank the Tank at Met Spring Training in Jupiter. Really, Cardinal Spring Training, gorgeous facility. Let me tell you, just gorgeous stadium. It's it's right next to um, it's right next to FAU. Everything's walking distance. There's free parking everywhere. I highly high, and I hate the Cardinals, the Marlins. I don't, I don't even care about them. But I highly recommend going to a Cardinals game. It was awesome. How did you swing the uh, the Frank the Tank meetup? Um. Well, I just DM'd him on uh, Twitter about last week about them coming in June because they're going to be doing a tour of ballparks in June. Um, and I said, hey, if you guys come to Bradenton, you come to Tampa, let me know. We'll take you around because I know Dave Portnoy was in Tampa. And then he came all the way out of Sarasota. He kind of made his way back down to pizza reviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I'll just shoot him at the end. You never know. Tank responded within 10 minutes. Very quick. Um, I got on the I got an email with uh, James, one of his one of his guys, like not his assistant, but kind of his assistant. Um and, you know, they, they didn't have a ton of time because it was so last minute. I wasn't expecting more, but I was hoping for a little bit more content. Maybe do a couple videos with them. But we got to meet him. That was awesome. Frank is, he was locked in on the game when we first met him. Yeah. We walked up to his seats. Chase was like, he warned us. He was like, listen, he's locked in. So, you know, play cool. Be cool. I'm like, oh, I know. It, it's, listen, this Frank, he's going to be locked in. The only time he wasn't locked in was when I said, hey, there's a sports car shop about five minutes away from here. You know, maybe after the game, we can all go together and check it out. He literally perked up like a dog when he hears a, you know, when he hears a chip bag or something. He was like, sports? Sports players? He, I was like, yeah, right down the road. He was like, maybe we'll do that. Yeah, And, you know. That'd be my thing, man. I would love to check it out, too. <laughs> yeah, I was. <clears throat> you can already hear my voice going out here. Um, it was a pretty cool shot. Uh, the guy that came with us, Caleb Williams, he bought a. Bought a couple of autos, like five dollar autograph cards. Oh, a Johnny Hecker autograph for like five bucks, which was, I was like Johnny fucking Hecker. One of the great punters of our time. Yeah. How is it five dollars? Like, how is it not? I feel like that's like fifty bucks. Like, it has to be something like that. It depends. It depends. I did a card show yesterday, and I picked up a few, a few good ones. I picked up a Michael Garcia auto. I picked up a Gavin Cross prospect auto, and then a Zion Williamson PSA ten. So nice. I did all right. I did all right yesterday. Yeah. I saw I saw some of the videos on your Instagram. You were wheeling and dealing with seeing some youngins. Um yeah. did you fleece them? That's your job as an adult to fleece the youngins. No, he fleeced me. Oh my goodness. We we gotta we gotta do something. 
You should have sent it up to you should have sent it up to corporate to see if the trade was was really worth it. <laughs> Run it through the uh, Madden trade simulator. Yeah, the, I don't know if the Madden Madden trade simulator probably would have said no. Zion and baseball and Madden. I don't know. Cross sport trades. <laughs> Maybe you never know. There, there should be like a. I, I wouldn't be shocked if there isn't like a video game, baseball or like sports car video game. Yeah, you know, like where you're. I mean, obviously there's NFTs, but you actually get to go to these card shows in the video game and trade with people. That would be kind of. There, there will be. It'll be virtual reality card shows eventually. That has to happen. We have to see it. Um, but. Frank the Tank also did have a video where he's freaking out about the Miami Dolphins because he's worried, you know, he, he does his thing, he claps his hands, he's chewing on his chew toy, all that stuff. Um, so we can talk a little bit about them. Um, they lost a lot. Their defense basically I picked the shreds. Christian Wilkins, um, which was the anchor of their offensive line, is gone. He's in Oakland now, um, or Vegas. I, I, I will always say Oakland. I don't care. It's, I'm hoping it's strange, I hey? I'm I'm gonna be 80 years old, and my kids are gonna be like, or my grandkids are gonna be like, Papa, like, what? Why do you keep saying Oakland? It's like, because you know, back in the day, they were in Oakland. That was better. They got into more fights. <laughs> it was just, it was better. Uh, Vegas is Vegas is awesome for a lot of reasons. Um, I'm sure the atmosphere is awesome. I mean, they're they get good reviews, but Oakland just fits. It's just no, they have no, just they have no professional sports teams left, which is a travesty. Yeah, well, Vegas doesn't want the A's, so. Yeah. And the Chaotically Intolerant Table Tennis League has the Oakland locomotives, so that's, a, that's the newest team. I mean, we can't, we can't forget about the, the Oakland locomotives. You know, uh, you have big shoes to fill. Yeah, very bit. We do have big shoes to fill, though. Um, but hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm not the manager, so I don't want them to win a title. Um, anyways, I want to look at the Miami Dolphins a little bit. So they signed Jordan Poyer, Shaq Barrett. Uh, just a few names, I guess, his bigger names. Shake Bailey, they re-signed. They did re-sign Solvin Ahmed, um, which was, I think that's a good, like, good death piece to add. Uh, Anthony Walker, they signed to a one-year deal uh, for a linebacker. I really like the Jordan, Jordan Boyer signing. They got him for one year, two million. He's a veteran guy. Like, I think teams like that really need veteran guys. Their defense already got torn up. But I think they're going into a slight rebuild like a, a mini rebuild just like the bills are actually the Bills, the chargers everybody everybody in the afc is going to rebuild why would you try to compete right now except for the indianapolis pulse who who might be or who are working on a deal with legere sneed right now i do have he was he <laughs> is he that years. bad no he's the best quarterback in the league but he wants 20 million a year he wants the same contract as chris jones which just it's not going to fly. We have Trey McDuffie behind him. We have we still re-signed Deion Bush at safety, who can provide a little bit of help. Uh, and then we'll draft the quarterback, able to keep our quarterback core alive and well, even after losing a piece. We lost Kendall Fuller, and mm -hmm. Legereus needs to step right in. Now Legereus Steele will go, and Trey McDuffie will step in, and somebody else will surprise us um, in the second quarterback role. I'm yeah. perfectly confident. The I love the Matt Arizo pick. I mean, obviously his history was, you know, it wasn't true. I mean, that's all it is. And you know, I think people people kind of compare him to the Trevor Bauer thing. I don't know what's up with Trevor Bauer. I don't because sometimes I see things. They say, oh, well, the cases are still open against him. Other people say, no, that's not true. Which when I heard the cases were closed, and he, you know, he was not there. Never open. He was never charged of anything. Not um, the whole thing was the accusers legal team was trying to settle with him for money. They just, they wanted money. And I, I watched the whole thing on like step-by-step step how it went down. And it seems like there were other athletes that got hit by the same group and they just paid up. And he was the one who uh, said, okay. I'm not going to pay up. For, yeah. they wanted, for a lot of athletes, if you said three million, they'd say, uh, you know what? Give them three million and just forget about it. So I know yeah, you for the head to to get rid of the headache of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but the Kansas City Chiefs, I love the Matt Ariza. He had like a ninety yard punt against the Colts in the preseason. The punk um last year. Little punk god. Marquise Brown, you bolster the wide receiver core that I mean, if if I said Marquise Brown is gonna be the big free agent signing for the wide receiver core 
like maybe like three years ago, you would have probably been like, all right, like whatever. But now, which, you know, you're like, oh my God, I just, to have solo, anyone yeah. is nice. Um, and that Arizona part of those team is just. So the eight of those downs with, who was, who was after Josh Dobbs? Who was the third or fourth string dial? Um, exactly. Is that's the exact the point? Who nobody knows, and he still caught what six hundred yards for a few touchdowns. He didn't have a, a bad year given the circumstances. And the last time, Clayton Tune, it was one of them. Yeah, the last time he was catching passes from a competent quarterback, he went for a thousand yards. So yeah. imagine what he could do with Mahomes. He, he doesn't need to catch uh, eighty passes for twelve hundred yards. He needs it. He needs. And we need 800 yards and six TDs out of him just to take a little bit of heat off Kelsey and Rice. And we're going to draft another receiver. So we're going to be four deep at pass catcher this year. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to last year where we were Travis Kelsey, that was it until Rishi Rice kind of broke out. So it's free peak time. Oh, hello. Butter is back. Any of the listeners, you guys remember Butter? He's he's just going to walk around in the background. I don't know where he's still at. He's just chilling, though. Um, so just over that. Um, we haven't actually talked since the Chiefs have won the Super Bowl, correct? Not not on the yeah. podcast. That's for all. Dude, are you and I want the Chiefs? How do you feel about the Chiefs? Yeah. Can I get a... We're, we're going to get a... We're going to get an instant reaction. So, Butter, come here. The Chiefs are... Back to that Super Bowl standings. Yes. Talk to Mike. What do you think? I speak well retriever. Uh, he's a, he's a he's a big fan. Um, he does he does live in a house he does live in a house of Detroit Lions fans. Uh, the Chiefs are back to back Super Bowl champions. As a Chief fan, I thought, would you ever think this is possible? Like ten years ago, did you ever think that that it was? Um, well, I, there was a point. There was a time in my life when I said that. Jayhawks won a national championship in basketball while I was alive. Jayhawks won a major college. Royals won the World Series and Chief won a Super Bowl. I would just kind of fade away like uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that would be <laughs> it for me. Um, yeah. And everything else happened before the Chiefs won a Super Bowl. When we drafted Mahomes, I had been on the Mahomes train for about two years prior to being him, us drafting him. Um, and when, when everybody else was, saying, else was Sean Watson in that draft, I was saying Mahomes. So as soon as we took him, I knew big things were going to happen. Yeah. Granted, Alex Smith is my all-time favorite chief. Um, but, yeah, when we brought in Andy Reid. We brought in Mahomes, and we knew that he was going to be behind Alex Smith. Um, Tyreek Hill had already had his breakout year with Alex Smith. Kelsey had already broken out. Um, yeah, I... I I knew big things were on the horizon, but back yeah. in, instead of backtracking that far, backtrack six months ago when we were, were on a losing streak and we were barely winning games, I thought we were going to go into like a mini rebuild. I thought yeah. this season was a loss. The next season was a loss. Thought we were going to have to develop Gracie Rice for another year. And my fear was that Kelsey would retire and we'd have nobody to fill in for him. Now we'd have no elite receiver. No Travis Kelsey, who is both an elite tight end and an elite receiver. So that was my fear. But now I think we might win four more in the next decade. I think partially, like, it, it, there was a time where everyone was starting to say Travis Kelsey was washed, right? Like, that was, you know, that was the this season, at least. It was like, okay, he doesn't look as big. He doesn't look as strong. He doesn't look as fast as he normally did. And I think just a, a testament to what, those guys can do, like, he just turned it off. He was like, okay, like, I'm I'm ready now. Like, I'm actually ready to start playing. And there were, in the playoffs, when it mattered, like, he looked legit. He needed a little and, help. He needed yeah. some help. He can't do it all by himself anymore. She Rice, with about two games left in the season, really picked it up, had his mm -hmm. big game. Kelsey got week 17 where he got to sit down for a week, a little mm -hmm. bit of rest. And then in the playoffs, all of a sudden, you had Scantling catching a few balls. You had um, Justin Watson came up with a big, a big grab or two, and Rice yeah. played well. We all you need, all Kelsey needed was the defense to just focus a little bit on somebody else, and he's still yeah. more than capable of going for a thousand yards and eight touchdowns in a season. 
he just can't be the the only option. Five yeah. years ago, he could. Mm -hmm. 2018, he could be the only option. I was I was actually the the night or the morning after the Super Bowl, I woke up and actually I wasn't hungover because. I mean, I'm sat my team. I'm not really going to get too drunk for it. I'm sure you were somewhat. I mean, you you did have to go to work the next day. <laughs> but I rewatched the 2013 AFC wildcard game. I had to. Oh. I I rewatched it. I had to. I don't want to bring up those good those bad memories. Um, I, the yeah. Colts and the Titans killed us in the Alex Smith era. The was Smith was era. that that was the that was the Marcus Mariota Pat throws a touchdown to himself, right? Self. And then it happened again with Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Lamar Jackson threw a ball to himself this year against us, <laughs> and I thought I, I, I saw uh, I saw Marcus Mariota from my late yeah. but uh, I'm, I'm sure Lamar Jackson is the Mariota. Yeah, but uh, sure. what's your outlook on the Colts if they bring in Sneed, who got Pittman locked up, Anthony Richardson comes back, and now you have a competent backup? Yeah, where do you see? Oh, this? Joe Flacco, man, Joe Joan Cool. Um, I, I was literally jumping up and down when I saw the news. I was like, oh my God, we got Joe Flacco. And it's like five years ago, I wouldn't have thought anything about it. Been like, okay, Joe Flacco, whatever. Now, just because of, of the lore, because of just everything he's become, of course I'm going to want Joe Flacco. I would have been fine with James Winston. Is he a top five all-time backup? Um, he's an elite quarterback. I, I don't know what you're talking about. He's not even a backup. He's... He won a Super Bowl. <laughs> don't Michael won a Super Bowl. That's it. Um, that's where the conversation ends. Don't don't talk to me about Trent Dilfer or Brad Johnson. Who, who's the guy? Yeah, Ryan Johnson. Don't talk to me about them. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl. He, and I mean, listen, he did it on the back of throwing pass interference, like on on drawing pass interference for his wide receivers. That's elite enough. You have to know how to do stuff like that to be an elite quarterback. So Joe Ellis. Unfortunately, with Anthony Richardson's recent uh, health, you're going to need Joe Flacco. Yeah, honestly, I would have been fine with Jameis. I would have really liked Jameis. Just because I, I feel like with a younger guy, you can debate this, I guess, because Jameis is like, you know, he's a more outgoing type of guy. He's going to be, he's a much more louder presence in the locker room, which is sometimes like what you need. A guy just to have fun, to keep fine side. That's what Jameis is. He's a vibes guy. And I would say Anthony Richardson's style of play is going to be a little bit closer to Jameis. Jameis rather than Joe Flacco, who is a pocket passer. He's just going to sit there. He's going to stand there. He's going to take, you know, he'll take some shots. But um, I'm fine with either one. I, I've said for a long time we needed a veteran in there. I was happy with Minshew. I really hope Minshew gets a starting job in, in Vegas. I, really, I think I predicted it. Maybe on when the show on the show we were talking, I might have said something about Minshew being a Raider. Um, sure. I'm happy to see him do that. He should beat out Adrian O'Connell. And I was talking to my dad about it, and he was like, well, "Minshew like earned a starting job." I was like, "No, but I still want him in Indy. Like, I don't. He he can fight with Richardson. Like that that will keep the fight up a little bit more. I think, especially just knowing that he kind of already was there. Like he was there for you know he was there last year." And he, this was his team last year, basically, because Richardson, you know, wasn't there. Um, yeah. But I, I, I mean, I love the Joe Flacco one either way. I, I love it. Um, really exciting. They're they're in a weird. The Colts are in a weird spot right now, and I, I've mentioned this, I guess, before. They're because you have a, a second year quarterback who played four games in his first season, but at the same time, you have, you know, you have Pittman locked down for three years now. Prover Stewart locked down for three years. Zaire Franklin locked down for three years. Kenny Moore locked down for three years. Um, you have uh, DeForest Buckner is expired at the end of next year. So you're in this weird spot where it's like you have to win in the next three years, even though Richardson is such a young guy. And if you can surround him with enough talent, maybe they can make up for some of his rookie mistakes that you're going to see next year. Because I feel like one interception in the four games that he played was a little bit of a fluke. Um, he was known to make mistakes at Florida. That was just, that's just what it is. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I just, I, I hope they treat him better than, than they did luck. I really do. I hope they try and treat him better. I hope they really call plays to protect him a lot more because I'm always worried about that now. They just don't really seem to care all that much. 
but there's a danger in going uh, hypothetically trade for Darius Sneed. They don't get a job done. There's a danger right now in the AFC in trying to go all in. Yeah. Look at these other teams who have done it and how many of them have won a Super Bowl. I mean, the Chargers. No way. Yeah, the Chargers try to do it during the Mahomes era. Yeah. Um, none. The only one we haven't won in recent years was a NFC uh, NFC Super Bowl champion. The Bills tried to build up. Now they're breaking it back down. The Raiders, the Broncos, the Ravens are still trying it. Um, but the yeah. Bengals are going to lose T. Higgins. They're going to lose Tyler Boyd. They just lost Irv Smith to the uh, Chiefs. Joe Mixon's out, and they brought in who I, what I think is a downgrade in Zach Moss. I think Zach Moss is a downgrade from Joe Mixon. No. <laughs> As a former Colt, I've seen, I saw what he was. If you really get him cooking, he can be something. He can be different. He is a, I said it last year, like we had two starting backs in our backfield. It does, I, I will say, some of these signings that I see, they kind of reek of like, you saw what you did last year, but... We don't know that if it's it's not sustainable or not. Like it, it, it almost somebody signed. What was one I saw? Um, it's like a really big name signing, but I feel like it's gonna. Maybe it was Gus Edwards. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, when, oh, I think actually, um, Derrick Henry. I feel like the Derrick Henry. I feel like he's gonna fall off a cliff, and I actually love the idea of the signing because you get to have the uh, combination of Lamar and Derrick Henry. And they're going to, like, you run a triple option with those two. Like, don't, you know, run an option, run run a triple option with anyone else. Like, that would be almost unstoppable. But I feel like Henry, like, running backs especially, they fall off a cliff so much faster than it goes. Yeah. At my age, yeah. I'm a, I'm a washed up running back. <laughs> so, I mean, at my age, I feel it. I'm like, oh man, I wake up in the morning, I'm sore just from like walking out of the house. I couldn't, I couldn't play professional football right now. It's, and those guys, and those guys, like, they feel like that too. Like, they, it's, I mean, obviously, I don't know if it's to the, you know, they're beating up their bodies a lot more, but it's not like they feel young. I can't imagine Derek Henry would really feel that young. They say it's like getting in a car accident like five, six times a week. The, the beating they take in practice yeah. and a, in, in the game. So, yeah, you know, Derrick Henry, and he's huge. He's a huge person. I mean, just being that large has to put more strain on his joints and muscles than, you know, a traditional size running back. That's why Butterbean succeeded. He didn't have a, he didn't have any muscle. Yeah. <laughs> and Brandon Jacobs. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, of other big, huge running backs. I can't think of it off the top of my head. It's like above six foot. How tall is Derrick Henry? Oh, he's six two? Six three. Six three? Jesus. Mm -hmm. If traditional running back what, five seven five ten. He's five inches taller than your normal running back. I just I don't know. I, yeah. I I know what you're saying, and I feel like the that move is a desperation move by the Ravens. I mean, if it pays off and Derrick Henry can do it one more time. They've got an excellent shot at the Super Bowl because they can do to the Chiefs next year what they couldn't do this year, which is just run the ball down with you. Yeah. So it's the only way to beat us is you have to hold the well, ball. Well, they could have done it. They they chose not to save money just take it. up and chose, which was the most baffling. And that, that, I think that will go down against John Harbaugh as one of his. Like, they'll point the finger at his legacy. They'll be like, listen, like you had a great legacy as a head coach. You won a Super Bowl. You know, you did all these things, but like you had another, you had other opportunities with a two time MVP and Lamar Jackson, and you refused to run the football. Like, that was the weakest you guys have been in a long time. I mean, that's the weakest like, you yeah, will be. Game. And I kept saying, if they decide to run the ball, let's say they go into the second half and they can put together one sustained drive around the ball, all of a sudden we're in trouble because their defense is locking us down. All they had yeah. to do was just hold on to the ball, go down the field a few times, score. Doing what mm -hmm. they are best at and what we are worst at defending. And yeah. really, it was a match made in heaven for them, and they kind of punted it away, thankfully. Thank yeah. you for a, uh, another ring. We'll <laughs> take a few more. Um, when, when Also, when I look at Derek Hedder in the way, because he, he was second in the league in yards this year, which was astonishing because he didn't do it in the Derek Henry way. That's a part of That's another reason why I think he might fall off a cliff this year. Like, you just. 
the, the way he got it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't Derrick Henry. It, it, he didn't look like himself at all. And yeah, he was able to get it done. But I think this is kind of the time he's, he's not going to get it done this year. But I, I doubted him last year too. I was like, listen, he's not going to be that good. He's not going to be that good. And it was still a flaw. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars signing, well, Gabe Davis was the big one, which I love the Gabe Davis signing. I think he's been an underrated wide receiver for so long. He's been stuck kind of in the shadow of Stephon Diggs. I don't really believe in the Jaguars. So he fell in for Calvin well, Ridley. Calvin Ridley was top 20 in what, every statistical category. Went over 1,000. He was? Yards, eight touchdowns. Look it up. He went over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. Calvin Ridley had a, a, a sneaky big year. Can Gabe Davis yeah. do that? Because that's what they have to be signing to do. If you're bringing Gabe Davis with Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley, then you've got like an elite one, two, three punch. I think Trevor Lawrence could do something with that if he can stay healthy and be on the field. But I don't think Gabe it, Davis can fill in those numbers. Yeah, it, it did feel like, to me, they didn't really have a deep a deep threat. And that's what Gabe Davis more can be. For them, they it, it felt like they could not stretch the field enough. Um, and having Gabe Davis, we saw what he was. He was able to help stretch the field for Buffalo with you know with Josh Allen, who's an, an amazing talent. But we kind of do forget that Trevor Lawrence is still an amazing talent. Like he yeah. obviously has not lived up to the hype that that he was you know brought up on. Like he was, they they were pointing him out in like many camps as as a high school, saying, "Oh, this guy might be in the ball." Um, I think it's hard to live up to those expectations anyways. We did a number one pick draft. Uh, you can still vote on it um, on chaotic things on like home. And for a lot of those guys, like it's just so hard. Like it, it, you, you don't want to say they're bad players because they were, but they just never lived up to what it was. Like Peyton Manning and John Elway and Bruce Smith. There's like three guys who really, truly, 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 truly Lived up to the number one pick status. Miles was Miles Garrett the number one overall? Yeah, he was. That would be my pick. Which he, I mean, had has he? Because it feels like the number one pick is, you know, he's the he's best a, player. He's a game breaker on a one of the worst teams in the league. Worst franchise, franchise. Yes. And we yeah. have a. Uh, that's actually my topic today. We're gonna do that. The worst franchise, of the NFL awards. So whatever you're ready to kick that off. Because I don't know if you know this about me. Um, if Hayo hey, Russell Wilson was a professional sport, I am Michael Phelps in Beijing. I hate, hate, hate Russell Wilson. And right now, I have to go on a little mini rant here. Mm -hmm. I feel like the guy who said that the earth was round or everybody else thought it was flat. And now that everybody else is realizing that the earth is round, I'm getting my flowers. I've been saying Russell Wilson is bad for years. So, do you mind if we use that to segue into the worst franchise in the NFL? Absolutely. I, I don't know how. I don't know how we're going to do that to the Steelers. I, I can't. Oh, well, we're not talking about the Steelers okay. here. So, okay. oh, Steelers will get in. It'll be involved. All right, like this guy. I'm going to get everybody. Uh, everybody who deserves, it, I'm going to get them. So, first nominee is the Broncos. The Broncos have now set themselves back three years in draft picks because they missed. What, two first rounders and a second rounder in the past two years? So they're at a talent deficit to bring in Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was terrible because he is terrible. And now they set him off to Pittsburgh. Um, what what do they have to, to show for it? <laughs> I mean, what do the Broncos have? Now you're still the little brother, Chief's little brother. You might be the worst team in the division, and you brought him in to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's mind blowing how much money they committed to him, how much draft capital they gave up. When everybody around the NFL knew that Russell Wilson was a bad quarterback, he is still on their books for what two more years? He's yeah, he has a thirty nine now. Yeah, they they are paying they are paying for Russell Wilson to be Justin Fields' backup in Pittsburgh, which is yeah. mind blowing. And wait, 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 wait. Justin Fields back up? Yes. No, Russ is Russ is starting. Russ is already said Russ is starting. Uh, wait till week five. I'm playing this. I have this at my life. Here's what I see about Russell Wilson. Go back, think back. Just take take a trip to Seattle when 
the Steelers or the Seahawks were the contenders. They were the Super Bowl favorite. If you were the coach of an opposing team, what's your game plan to to try and go against the, the Seahawks? What are you most afraid of in those years? Well, probably the defense. The defense. The Legion yeah. of Boom. They were such a good defense, they had their own name. What yeah. other elite, elite, elite quarterback wasn't the focal point of another team's game plan? Even when my- Well, I honestly, honestly, I would say that 2015 All Coast team, Peyton, Peyton was a shell of what he was, and that no fly zone defense was a problem. And we also know that Peyton was a shell of what he was. I mean, he, Osweiler was, I think he started like half the games that year. Yeah, but that was Peyton Manning in his late 30s. This is Russell Wilson in his prime. Yeah. He was considered an elite quarterback by many in his prime when he wasn't the primary, I mean, the primary piece of the team. Even this year when Mahomes had the best defense in the NFL, and the Chiefs defense this year was historically good. Mm -hmm. Other teams, you're still most afraid of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And I I can't see where you, you bring in Russell Wilson, who never really won anything other than what his defense won for him. You bring him into Denver, you mortgage your whole future, and now you're shipping him off to, and I'm calling it, to back up Dustin Fields in, in Pittsburgh. I know so, Russell Wilson. <laughs> I, I hate you. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of Russ, I, I, but I hate Sean Payton more. I hate, I despise Sean Payton. I think, like, I think he's just a, not a good human being from everything that we've seen. I mean, Bounty Gate, number one, is just bad human. It's not even bad football player, bad coach. It's a bad human thing to do. He's like, just a bad person. He's both. I, I just find, yeah, and he's, I, I'll say that too. I mean, he won, obviously, people think I'm salty because I think he's just not that good of a coach, but yeah, Drew Brees, we were, what, 15 years, and they won one title in, in, an, in an NFC that was, like, Rodgers always collapsed. But you think about those NFC, the NFC teams that came out, and Saints fans can say, oh, well, you know, we got screwed over in a couple of NFC, NFC title games, Aaron Rodgers. But they, again, they couldn't get it. He couldn't get it done in the NFC title league. Um, you, had the, you had the Russ Seahawks for a little bit. Um, who else? Cam Newton for like two years. I mean, there was no con- that's that's the thing that gets me. It's, it more just interests me. It doesn't really piss me off. The NFC doesn't really have that. Like the AFC is a quarterback league, right? The AFC has always been dominated by, and it's still going to be dominated by a few top quarterbacks. You know, Lamar, uh, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, and um, Josh Allen. I, I don't know why I'm blanking. Josh Allen. Like those those four guys are probably going to dominate the league. I mean, hopefully Anthony Richardson is going to put his name in there this year. Um, but, you know, there's nothing guaranteed yet. And the NFC has just been kind of a revolving door. Like you had Kurt Warner in the early 2000s for a couple of years, but there hasn't really been like the consistency. And I mean, the Saints, I think, I think they went to three NFC title games in total. Like they couldn't even get out of the division. They should have gone to 10. And the yeah. Uber's like, should on the 10. With that team that they had, with as good of a defense as they supposedly had, they should have gone to more. I think it was a complete mismanagement by Sean Payton, and the Bounty Gate thing just completely, completely just put cast a horrible shadow, I think, on his whole career. Um, and then obviously he got mad that the whistleblower for Bounty Gate got hired by the NFL, you know, as a, I don't know, because he did it, he did his job, he he did a. Good thing instead of just being Joe Pa and, and sending it up to <laughs> telling people once and then not worrying about it again. Um, he actually, you know, did a little bit more. He was more on the Which is the second reason why the Denver Broncos might be the worst franchise in the NFL. Why, Joe Pa? <laughs> no, no. Sean Payton. Oh, uh, just, just Sean Payton. Right. Sean Payton. Um, right. It was a. I guess, it, I guess if you could say. Current, if you, if you could say you look at franchises currently, yeah, the Broncos are right there. Like, as, as it's team lit. If they had those, they had John Elway, and they won the Super Bowl a few times. Oh, I'm, I'm, I was talking right now. If you, were, like, if you are a fan of a team right now, Denver's in the top three. My second nominee is the Los Angeles Chargers. 
who just allowed Keenan Allen to, to leave. If they trade away Keenan Allen, you're letting Mike Williams walk, and you're likely going to let Austin Eckler walk. You don't have a good defense. Your best defensive piece is aging, Joey Bosa. You haven't brought in real. I mean, you brought in Khalil Mack, but Khalil Mack is past his prime. What are you giving Justin Herbert? And you're trying to, to convince everybody that Justin Herbert is a franchise piece. Who's he going to throw to? I mean, you're yeah. going to waste three more years of his career. By the time it, it's it, there's an op- opportunity for the Chargers to be back in the hunt, you're going to be talking about having to re-sign or extend Justin Herbert again. So you're you're I'm noticing. I'm noticing a pattern here with your worst franchises. Um, I I would say, like, Herbert might have to kind of say, all right, well, I'm. I won't wait. I'm gonna have to waste a few years because the Brandon Staley experiment that was on ownership like that. He should have been fired, honestly, after that Raider game. Um, the you know the one that went to overtime a couple years ago. He should have been fired after that. He didn't get fired, and I think they made the right move with Harbaugh. I I, I like Harbaugh, and but it's an aging core. You have to do. You either have to rip the bandaid off, or you can just completely waste his career and. Eventually, in three years, when Harbaugh would get fired, they would have to go into a rebuild again. So then you're wasting another three to four years. I think it's better to just do it now. I would rather just do it now rather than wait. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm awaiting your nominees for worst NFL franchise. My nominees? Um, well, the Tennessee Titans, I mean, they hired a yes man before their head coach. That, and that's why, I mean, that's partially why I love Mike Rabel a lot. That I think. I think Vrabel knew, they both knew the writing on the wall, and they said, listen, this is, we want to do a rebuild, and Vrabel might have said, I don't want to be in a rebuild anymore. I want to win, and you guys traded away A.J. Brown. Like, it felt like every piece that we tried to get got traded away, or that we, that we developed got traded away. I mean, what, what do the Arizona Cardinals even have? Like, Kyle Murray. <laughs> the Arizona Cardinals, the Kyle Murray, and that's it. Like, I have no faith that they can even play a football game next year. They can, they can be another, like, sexy kind of they can play spoiler like they did last year with philly but that's pretty much it there and that's another team who four years ago people were talking about them as a potential super bowl contender for the yeah. for the next few years because they brought in marquise brown that was supposed to be their number one option they yeah. had who is their running back who do they have a running back are you thinking rondell moore no 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 not rondell moore um the guy from the Steelers, he, he got traded in the Steelers on her cone is still there. They, yeah. they He's still there. They have like a one to shot for you. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Kyler Murray doesn't stay healthy. And I don't think Kyler Murray wants to play. That's another. He's Kyler Murray is one of those guys like Anthony Rendon in the major leagues. I don't think Kyler Murray cares that much about football. I think he chose football over baseball because he knew he'd make more money as a quarterback than a, than a center fielder. But I don't think he has a passion for football. And, yeah, the Cardinals, they haven't really put, put any pieces in place to try to help him win when he yeah. was healthy. Mm-hmm. And it, in the modern NFL, even if you're going to try to go the defense route, you still have to have – you have to score points. Because yeah. look at the Chiefs, even with one of the best defenses in the NFL, the Ravens, with one of the best, best defenses in the NFL this year, you still talk about how can they score? How can they score like, enough points? Yeah. Cardinals never even gave Kyler a chance to score enough points after his rookie year when he looked fairly promised. Um, and then my third one, and then I think we'll wrap it up because it's a pretty good time stopping point. Um, this is the New York Jets. Uh, Aaron Rodgers also is not going to be uh, running with RFK now, it is officially decided he has been dropped from the campaign. Um, but I honestly, I can't stay. <laughs> I I can't stand the media coverage of the Jets. The amount of small market teams that just don't get coverage that are good, like good football teams, don't get coverage um, because the Jets take up that time is really just annoying. Like nobody, they are one of the most, in my opinion, they're one of the most irrelevant football teams out there. Yeah. Um, the way they handled the Aaron Rodgers situation last year was pitiful. Like it was pitiful. The fact that you don't go out and actually get a competent quarterback at the deadline when you could already tell Zach Wilson just wasn't it. He just wasn't going to be it. 
who have a fantastic defense, like a dominant top five, you know, they, if they had a good offense, a top five defense in the league, and they didn't even try. Like, there was no attempt at anything. It could go as the Flacco. They could have gotten... They, yeah. The Flacco. They could have gotten Josh Dobbs. I think Josh Dobbs would have been a better option than, than Zach Wilson. But, I mean, it was... What's Rogers going to say? If you go out and get a, a different, a veteran quarterback, I, I don't think Rogers wanted them to perform well because it would look bad on him. I, I, I 100% agree. I think him going on the Pat McAfee show, because he, he said when he came in there, oh, this it's filled with distractions. That, you know, we, we want to focus on winning. Guess what he did? He was a distraction all year. He could have sat on the sideline. He could have worked with Zach Nelson. He could have said, listen, kid, I'm, I'm going to stay out of the spotlight. I'm going to just, I, I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do. Like, I'm, I'm going to help you win so that next year I can come in and mentor you even more because I was supposed to mentor you this year while I'm playing. And he went on Pat McAfee and he talked about how, oh, I'm, I'm rushing to get back. How do you think that feels to Zach Wilson? A kid who's... Like a guy with a torn Achilles is saying, I'm rushing to get back because I know you're not good enough. That is so deflating to a young kid. And I honestly, like, I really do hope Zach Wilson gets a, a fair shot because I think any quarterback that goes to the Jets, they just don't get a fair shot. It doesn't matter who, like, if Joe Namath is your greatest quarterback in, in the history of your franchise, that's sad because he threw more interceptions and touchdowns in his career. He had a, he had a career losing record. You had a career losing record. Like the Super Bowl they won, they scored 16 months. It's not exactly like a, a, oh man, Joe Namath really killed it this year. Like he really, he really stepped up and did it for us. Like, you know, he, he, but he, he guaranteed it. That's the whole thing. He oh, it. yeah. That, that's, but and what, what NFL that, quarterback is going to say, no, I think we're going to lose the Super Bowl. <laughs> like, say, like, oh, we're just going to see what happens on Sunday. Like every single quarterback, every single player would say, yeah, I, I think we're going to win. Like, I, I believe, especially if you get there. Like, you, you do have this miraculous lump, and you get there. And you're underdog. So, wh- whatever, dude. It's it, it's just because it's New York. That's it. That, that's all they care about. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Rodgers is going to be relevant again on the football field. I think his career is effectively over. I don't think that the team respects him. I don't, I don't see how the rest of the team can respect it. When he comes back, we know, I mean, he has his boys. Like, throughout his career, he's had a few of his boys. But overall, I don't think he was well-liked in the locker room. Mm-hmm. It's, you almost can't like him. People who have been around him, his family doesn't like him. <laughs> Most of his teammates don't like him. He's had head coaches that don't like him. And you bring him into New York. Um, another one-time Super Bowl winner who is considered elite. He's NFC Russell Wilson. It's how I view him. Do you think I? I honestly, I kind of think he's gonna do the he's gonna do the Brett Favre thing because Vikings are looking for a quarterback, right? Like they're gonna be looking. They're probably gonna be looking next year too because what's what's their quarterback situation right now? Sam Darnold. I want to say he's like Brett Favre went from the played Packers Vikings Jets. It could be just yeah. like Rogers. That or you mean Packer, Packers, Jets, Vikings? Packer, yeah. They, yeah, they signed. Did Favre go? I thought Favre went Packers. Did he go Packers, Vikings, Jets, or Packers, Jets, Vikings? No, he went Packers, Jets, Vikings. Because he, he officially, officially retired. Um, And I think there's like a story. He, he took a shot against, I think it was against the Packers, with the Vikings. And he was like knocked out cold. And he had a hot dog and a hot chocolate in the locker room after he came to. And he was like, yeah. I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I was like, you know what? The amount of things that I don't relate to with Brett Favre, I get that. <laughs> yeah. Especially stealing money from, from the government. That's something I don't relate to. <laughs> oh, good. But I do relate to that. A, a hot dog and a hot chocolate, that would make you uh, a learning reveal. Yeah. Anyways, I could see the Minnesota Vikings maybe trading out, though. Especially Justin Jefferson might want out, which is scary. And... Now, Jamar Chase has everyone thinking that he might be going to the Bengals, which, that'd be terrifying. It would be, That's not It would be terrifying. If Joe Burrow can play football for an entire Yeah, they, they are, they're really terrified of that. And let me tell you, I have a TFCC tear in my wrist, which 
that's what they thought he had is something more severe than a CFCC uh, tear in his wrist. I I have major effects now. I, I was in a car accident. Have you gotten back full the full health? I'm I'm like pretty full. I mean, it happened it happened before we started doing the ping pong lead. Look, I would say I'm definitely not the same from before, you know, compared to now. But I was ever I was never fantastic. DFCC is a ligament. It's basically a ligament in the wrist. It's it's a um actually maybe it's a cartilage. It's it's in here, okay. in this area. And I have a bone. I have a bone basically tearing a piece of my bone tearing it apart. So. um it was from a car accident, not my fault, um, when I was 19, so like two, two and a half years ago now. But I still have the effects, and, and I couldn't imagine playing quarterback. Like, Joe is obviously, you know, football players are different. They play through much worse injuries that we wouldn't be able to play through, guarantee it. We just saw on the sideline when he tried to throw, he couldn't even get the ball out of his Couldn't head. even get a grip. Yeah. yeah. Like, he could barely even cook the football, which is terrifying. That's scary, and I love Joe Burrow as a player, and... You know, he's, he's Joe Cool. He, you know, he's probably that LSU team. I don't like. Yeah. That, <laughs> the LSU team is the greatest team ever assembled. That LSU team, just even the vibe, the, the vibes around that team were awesome, too. They were just so much fun. Just dancing in the White House, like, that was just, <laughs> that video, that all the guys are dancing. I don't know who that was, like a White House staffer or something, dancing with her. That was, that was pretty fun. Um. But anyways, enough reminiscing. We're going to wrap up here. Um, thank you all for watching. Go check out uh, John again on whatnot, correct? That's uh, Check me out on TikTok, Instagram, Screens All Sports Cards. Um, from there, you can find my eBay, whatnot, if you're interested in sports cards. Um, or, yes, to be directly, um, I do sell and sell a lot of sports cards, do card shows, and try to put out a lot of great sports-related content. Um, kind of revolving around the, the cards themselves. All right. Awesome. Um, make sure to like, subscribe to both of our channels, and we will see you next week. Or, I mess that up every single time. We will see you on Thursday.